<sighs> had to go check on my ribs. They're cooking. <laughs> my second grandma, Gra Grandma Goldie, she was born in Illinois, which was a farm commun community that she was born to. Now, when I look at Great Grandpa, him and Great Grandma lived in Indiana, but when Grandma was born, they were in Illinois. Once again, I think they traveled to different farms because they were farm hands. They didn't own a farm. They worked on other people's farms. And they would travel. So they go to Illinois. He probably went up there for farm work. Of course, grandma has, great grandma has no protection. They have sex and she gets pregnant. <laughs> so they're stuck in Illinois till le for at least two years. Now, apparently they didn't like it up there because grandma, uh, Goldie, lived the rest of her life in southern Indiana. Now, I don't know how she met Grandpa Mayfield. It could have been because both the uh, families lived in these small towns. And if you know anything about rural towns, a lot, of, a lot of times you know who lives in that farmhouse or who has that farm or, you know, you kind of know people or you know kind of some of the characters of people. You might not know everybody. I think back in that time frame in the early 1900s, they kind of knew their neighbors. So Williams and Mayfield lived uh, close to each other. Grandma and Grandpa, they get married 1918. And that was uh, a year after the First World War ended. Grandma has five kids from Grandpa when Grandpa Mayfield gets killed. Now, she was fairly young, too. She got married when she was in her 20s, though, a little bit older than Grandma Rady. Rady I, Grandma Rady, I think, was 17. Now, it's funny because both, both these grandmas are four years apart in birth, and they died four years apart, one in 1976 and one in 1972. <laughs> but she had four children, she was pregnant, and Grandpa Mayfield was uh, hauling gravel. That was his job. He could have been, it could have been associated with the coal mines, but he was driving a gravel truck. It flipped because, once again, there wasn't really good regulations on how um, high they should fill these trucks or anything. So the truck flips, and Grandpa is crushed. His skull is crushed from the vehicle or the truck, <clears throat> and he lives for three days before he dies. Now, Grandma's pregnant. Can you imagine? You're pregnant. You've got four children, which three of them are girls. You know, they, they wanted boys because if you're a farmer, you want boys to go out there and farm. You don't want a lot of girls because you're like, oh, the girls get pregnant and then, you know. So she, here she is with three girls and they're, they're toddlers. You've got three years, two years old, you know, four years old, six years old, eight years. It's like every couple of years she was having babies. So for two years after she has uh, my uncle and then she's married to Burdette. Now Burdette... He had four kids of his own. He had three boys and one girl. And I think the youngest was probably like 13. So his kids were a little bit older than Grandma Goldie's kids were. So she had, you know, she had like a two-year-old, four-year-old, six, you know, kind of like that, eight and ten when she marries him. So all her kids are like under that 13 age, and his kids are over. She gets pregnant five times with Burdette. Only two of the girls lived to be <clears throat> adults that, where they got married, had kids and grandkids. She had a little boy that lived until he was 11. He died. He had a bone infection, which was curable in those days. That's why I'm a little skeptical about these rural doctors. He suffered for four years, and he dies from it, 11 years old. Grandma had two children, two babies that 
didn't live past four months. One she named, it was a little girl, and one uh, was a little boy, but she didn't name it. So she would have had a total of 10 kids plus his four. But she ended up having uh, five, seven kids, and one for 11 years. Not only is she taking a care of Burdette's kids, she's taking care of the whole household. Of course, she had girls, so I'm sure her girls had to do a lot of the domestic chores with her, washing clothes, cleaning house, feeding everybody, cooking, and cleaning. And it, it wasn't that easy back then. Grandma Goldie didn't have running water either. I seen people back in the day in the 60s. I'd go back there and they would have a pump inside the house on the sink where you would have faucets today in a modern kitchen. You would have a kitchen sink and faucets. They would have a pump and they could pump the water right there into a sink. They didn't have to carry it. Mostly my grandmas carried water. They carried coal. You know, these houses were hot, or hot in the summer probably, and cold in the winter. All I heard about Burdette when she married him, that he was really a cruel man. He was very mean, they said, that he was lazy. Now, when I look up the census, Burdette was a farmhand or a farmer. Probably the second census after he's with Goldie, uh, he's listed as not able to work. So I don't know if he got injured or what. Now these are not only stories from my dad. My dad said how cruel he was. But I also talk to his blood granddaughters. When I go to a reunion for Dad Mayfield, they're there, even though they're not blood relatives of ours. We've known them, you know, pretty much our whole life. So they're like part of the family. She even told me, because I asked her one time, was your grandpa, as mean as they said, and she said yes. Now, she lived around him all the time, and she said he was just so mean to all the kids. She said he was just a mean guy. They did not like, nobody liked him. So here, you got my second grandma. She loses her husband, tragically. She's still able to have babies. She takes that route of getting married. She gets married. She's in an abusive relationship, marriage. And she lives there until she dies and, you know, he dies. She doesn't leave him. She stays in that, that marriage. And like I said, for that whole time, I never seen them have running water or... Now, Grandma Goldie, she was a smoker. And she smoked, her fingertips were yellow from smoking so much. Could be because she was with an abusive husband. But I didn't really know a lot about Goldie. It seems like something happened when Goldie did marry Burdette. As I'm searching my family tree, the only people I knew on my dad's side was his mom. I knew her for a short time. I knew his one of his sisters and his youngest brother. That's the only people I knew in his family. The only people. I didn't know any of his cousins, any of his uncles, aunts anything. I only knew those three people. Uncle Ray, he had no kids. And Aunt Winkle, that's what we called her, Aunt Winkle. She had seven kids, and that's who my first cousins, that's who we are all in, still in touch with each other. That I found out that he had an uncle that died in 1963. And I'm like, 1963? I was like, you know, 10 years old. So how come I didn't know about this this, grand, this uncle, which would have been my great uncle, I had no idea about him at all. So it sparked my interest. Grandpa Mayfield, he had two brothers and a sister. Now his sister, she died in the 40s. His mom, and my great grandma, she died in the 40s. I think right before World War II in that era. Now, Dad knew about his grandma because he went to her funeral. He went to both his grandma's funeral on his dad's side and his mother's side. So he knew about them. There was never, ever any mention of his other Mayfield side. And he never talked about his grandma or his grandpa's or anybody. 
He only told me stories about his stepdad. That was it, how mean he was. So, you know, I got to thinking. I said, well, here's Grandma Goldie. She's got four kids. She's pregnant, and her husband dies. It's almost like she's kind of desperate, you know, because she's got toddlers. You know, she's got to take care of them. She needs money to do that. It seems like at this time, either Grandma Goldie says... I don't want nothing to do with the Mayfields because they're not helping me, whatever the reason. It was her decision not to be around any Mayfields, or if this, you know, second husband was mean, maybe he was also controlling, and maybe he said, no, you know, they don't need to go over there and see them, or we see that happens a lot in society anyway. I think it might have been more so then because she had all these kids, you figure, at the end, she had five, four, that's nine, ten, eleven, and one that lived to eleven. She had eleven children that she had to watch after, take care of, clean, cook. She probably, he probably said, hey, you're not going to go over there. They're not coming. Maybe he chased them off when they come to see their grandkids, you know. Grandma was still alive. Great grandma was still alive. She could have came, you know. So I, I don't have no history of that. It just seems like that when she married Burdette, it stuff was severed on the Mayfield side because it just we have no history of that. It just makes me wonder. Now, I did meet a living relative of one of my uh, Grandpa Mayfield's brothers. His line, she's younger than me, but we connected on Ancestry.com. I ended up meeting her here. She came out here to Vegas with her husband. Me and my sister went and we picked her up. We went out and had lunch and we talked and shared a lot of stories. She didn't really know about my grandpa. You know, she only knew about hers, which was my grandpa's brother, you know. I, I'm glad I met her, you know, because that's a connect, connection there. You know, there's so many unanswered stories. You know, two grandmas living in the same areas, but they kind of went a little different of how they lived their life. Now, Neither one of them ever worked. You know, if they got Social Security later on, I guess that was from the state. I don't know. I really don't know. I know uh, Rady's second husband, he had worked in the coal mine, and I know he had black lung from that. So I'm sure he got money for that. His kids were all grown. I know Ben worked for a farmer. He would milk cows, and sometimes me and my sister would go with him while he milked them, and then he would drive us around and he'd say, okay, take the milk up to that house and we'd take it up there. Grandma had chickens. Grandma already had chickens. She sold the eggs. So she still was doing all that stuff later on in her life because, I mean, her life was just simple. She didn't have fancy clothes or fancy, she didn't have a lot of furniture and stuff like that. And even Grandma Goldie, she never worked in her, her life either except having babies and raising babies. She smoked like a chimney, you know. But I just thought I would give you an insight into my grandma's. That, that's not that far off. It might sound like it's far off, but that's my grandma. I knew them. I went to their houses. I seen how they lived. They were very restricted. Even my mom, who was born in the early 20s, how they wore their hair, how they dressed. You know, women couldn't wear stuff like this out in public. They'd be a hussy, you know. Having hair like this as a woman back in the day? Oh, uh, no, no. Wearing earrings like that? Orange? Oh, uh, no, no, no. You don't, have, you don't wear stuff like that. There were standards for women. They followed it. All I'm saying is we can't go back, and we're not going back.